groups uh, for selecting this for uh, presentation and all of you for attending. So I'll be talking about Talquetamab, um, a G protein coupled receptor family, C group five member D, CD3 bispecific antibodies in patients with relapsed refractory myeloma. These are results from a phase one slash two results from the monumental one study. So what is this agent? It's novel first-in-class bispecific antibody. I treat bispecific antibodies kind of like a double-sided tape or handcuffs. What they do is traffic the T cells to the cancer directly, and when the T cells are then recognizing the cancer, they release chemicals like perforin and granzymes to cause cell death. It's important to pick the right target for these, and GPRC5D is a good candidate for that because it's highly expressed on myeloma cells but spares normal tissues. In particular, the, the hematopoietic stem cells or the progenitors to, or the precursors to our blood. In the pivotal phase one study that's now published as of uh, this week in the New England Journal of Medicine, the response rate was 64 to 70%. That was a phase one study uh, with a large number of patients, but that was from a variety of doses, and it was a dose escalation study, and both IV and subcutaneous. Here, for the first time, we're presenting the phase two patients, um, and some of those because it did include the part one study, and you'll see that on the next slide about the numbers. But this graphic shows that when you give this bispecific antibody shown in green and orange, it binds both the tumor and the T cell, and you get cell killing. So this, the study design is shown here. The key objectives were to describe the efficacy and safety of this uh, agent, and the eligibility criteria were patients with measurable myeloma, and in the phase one portion of the study, patients had to have progression on or intolerance of established therapies and performance status. Uh, they had to be fit patients. The phase two page, uh, studies had to have at least three prior lines of therapy, including three important classes in myeloma, proteasome inhibitors, IMIDs, and CD38 antibody, and performance status could be a little worse, up to two. So the three cohorts in this study are shown on the right. We have the 0 0.4 milligrams per kilogram given every week. 0.8 milligrams per kilogram every two weeks, and then the third category could have received either of doses, but these, had, these patients had prior T-cell redirection therapy. Why is that important? You've probably heard a lot about CAR-Ts and bispecifics in myeloma, and when patients progress on that, because unfortunately we still haven't cured the disease, we need options for these patients. So this is the new unmet need, if you will, in myeloma. And the number of patients are shown, 143, 145, and 51, and the, the data that's never been presented before are the numbers shown for the phase two, but to increase the sample size, we also included the phase one to make this data more robust. So the patient characteristics are shown here, and they're typical of relapsed refractory myeloma, median age of 67. There's some important high-risk characteristics of these patients. Um, about 60% of patients were high risk in some way. One was that they had myeloma coming outside of the bones. Uh, that's called extramedullary disease. Second, they had high risk genetics. And third, they had stage three uh, myeloma, which is uh, all three of those are considered high risk. They also had five lines of prior therapy over the 6.7 years since their diagnosis. And when we look at the number of agents they've had, all of these patients had been exposed to the three pivotal classes of drugs and about three quarters had been exposed to all available drugs, the big five, um, which is Len, bort uh, pomalidomide, bortezomib, carfilzomib, and CD38 antibody. Importantly, the refractoriness um, is, is worth highlighting that almost all patients are refractory to CD38 monoclonal antibody, and also three quarters were refractory to the three major classes of drugs. And almost every single patient was progressing on their last line of therapy. So this is a tough population of patients who had exhausted a lot of the available therapies. And in spite of that, we see this impressive response rate of 74 and 73 percent. To put this into context, historically, for novel agents to get approved in myeloma by accelerated approval, we needed a response rate of 20 to 30. Well, now we're saying 70 is the new 20 to 30. This is um, incredible responses, and it was maintained in important subgroups, including ISS3, high-risk disease, number of prior therapies. And although the patients with disease coming out of the bones, which is called the extramedullary disease, had a slightly lower rate of response, even those patients was 50%. The median progression-free survival was 7.5 and 11.9 months respectively, but the duration of response was 9.3 in 13 months, and impressively, those patients who had a CR or better, which means we completely eradicated the disease, we don't even know how long the remissions last. So this is really uh, life-changing for these patients. 
Also important here is the safety. So when we look at the safety profile of this agent, um, and as we usually say, grade three and four are considered high-grade toxicities, those are relatively uncommon with the exception of hematologic side effects, so we're talking about low blood counts, which is not unexpected when you have a bone marrow-based cancer. And even that was only occurring in less than a third of patients that had grade three and four of that high-grade toxicity. That typically happened early, and, um, and, and, add, and that's an important feature because when we think about the ability of combining this agent in future studies, the lack of cytopenias is important. I really want to spend a moment on infections. This is very important for myeloma. The number one cause of morbidity and mortality in these patients is infection, and some of the other agents that are of generating a lot of interest have significant infectious complications. Um, upwards of 45% grade three and four infections, that's relentlessly increasing. Here, the rates of grade three and four infections were only about uh, 12 and 17%. Um, COVID is very important, um, and while 20, about 10% in both cohorts had COVID, there were two deaths from COVID, and while you could say perhaps this is due to vaccination, in the New England paper, which included the phase one study, many of whom uh, were accrued before we had vaccinations, and I can speak from New York, we were in the throes of things in the pandemic, there were no deaths reported. And so in contrast, the BCMA bispecifics are generating, are seeing a lot of COVID-related deaths. And finally, the need for giving immunoglobulin support to prevent recurrent infections was only 10%, which is quite low. So I think this slide illustrates why this agent is so important. Um, and one of the things that's been discussed with the FDA at a recent meeting with IMS was, what is the role of a single arm study to get accelerated approval? How do you really understand the safety profile of an agent when there's not a control arm to which to compare? But then how do you find a control arm when everybody's had all of the big drugs available? So we're wrestling with this, but I think this infection thing is something that we need to be paying attention to. I think it's a tragic thing if you're losing a myeloma patient who's in astringent complete remission with no detectable disease, and we're losing them to COVID or some other infection. And that's not what we're seeing here, and that's really nice to see for patients. When, with respect to other t safety profiles shown here, um, the rates of discontinuation were uh, about 5%, which is uh, favorable uh, and noteworthy. CRS, or cytokine release, is a common side effect of bispecifics, and it's basically when the T cells recognize the cancer, they release chemicals that can cause fever, low blood pressure, low oxygen. Generally, these were low grade, um, but they're quite frequent in 70 plus percent. Other side effects worth mentioning are uh, three, uh, skin, nails, and taste. So skin was quite manageable, and that, can, that was treated with topical steroids or oral steroids. The nails um, is primarily a cosmetic issue, but the, the loss of taste, of course, it, while these were all low grades, so we did not see grade three and four, we know that low grade toxicities can also significantly impact quality of life. But fortunately, this is manageable with supportive care and adjusting the dose. And, and that's why I think so few patients came off. Icons, which is where you can see neurologic issues, is uh, relatively uncommon as well, 10 to 11%, and that's also seen with other bispecifics. In that import important cohort of patients who had prior T cell redirection therapy, again, we saw a very impressive response rate of 63%. Um, this was in a patient with a median of six lines of therapy, um, and about 70% had prior CAR Ts, and a third of patients had prior bispecifics. The safety profile of this cohort was the same. So in conclusion, talquetamab, this is a first-in-class novel agent targeting a new target in myeloma, GPRC5D, with a very impressive response rate of 73 to 74% when given either weekly or every twice weekly, every twice, uh, every two weeks. In those patients with prior T-cell redirection, we saw this response was maintained. When we look at the important things like safety, how the drug is cleared, so-called pharmacokinetics, what the drug does to the body, so-called pharmacodynamics, those were consistent in those two dosing schedules. Uh, the, the responses were quite durable, um, and we don't even know the median duration of response in those patients who had a stringent, who had a complete remission. The rates of discontinuation due to AEs was uh, quite low, and um, the AEs listed adverse events are manageable. And so, where what's next? The study is already um, the pivotal confirmatory study, phase three, comparing talquetamab to approved therapies is already ongoing. And I think as I've been alluding to, the ability to give this drug with other agents is very important. So it's being studied in combination with standard backbone myeloma drugs with another bispecific, um, which would be completely chemotherapy sparing, and also with novel uh, immune modulating drugs like checkpoint inhibitors. 
and just want to thank the entire study team and patients and their caregivers um, for participation in this study and um, look forward to questions afterwards. Thank you.